Hello, and welcome to Storytime Adventures, where we tell stories for kids. I'm your host, Jackie, and I'm excited to share a new story with you today. Whether you're listening with your family at home or on a road trip like we often do, we hope our stories spark your imagination and take you on an adventure. Without pictures to guide us, using your imagination is like having a magic paintbrush, where the pictures in your mind are often more vivid and wondrous than any picture on a page. Before we begin, we want to give a big shout out to our listeners. Thank you for tuning in and supporting our podcast. If you enjoy our show, please leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform and share it with your family and friends. Stay tuned after the show for a fun activity that you can do with your family and friends that's connected to science, math, reading, or writing. Now sit back and relax and let your imagination take flight. We're excited to share this adventure with you. The Selfish Spider and Her Pickle In a beautiful green meadow, nestled among the tall mountains, a small insect village thrived. The village was made up of houses constructed of leaves, twigs, and mud, and each and every one was unique in its own way. The bustling village was always filled with activity, with insects of all kinds going about their daily business. There was a market for buying and selling goods, a community center for gatherings and events, and even a school for young insects to learn and grow. The village was ruled by a wise old aunt named Arthur, who had been there for as long as anyone could remember. Overall, the insect village was a lively and colorful place full of friendly insects who were always happy to lend a helping hand. In this village lived a little spider named Sally. Her web was made of the strongest silk and she had spent countless hours spinning and weaving until it was just right. Inside her web, she had a cozy little den where she liked to rest and read her favorite books. But Sally was a selfish spider, always eager to explore the meadow and discover new things, but never willing to share her findings with anyone. She thought that everything she found was hers and hers alone. One day, while out for a walk in the woods, Sally stumbled upon the most amazing thing in the whole wide world, a giant pickle. The pickle was enormous bigger than anything Sally had ever seen before. It was a deep olive green color that shimmered in the sunlight. The skin of the pickle was rough and bumpy, and it had a strong, pungent aroma that filled the air with a wonderful smell. She knew right away she had to have it, but there was one problem. Sally was too small to carry it all the way back to her web by herself. Sally's excitement turned into sadness as she realized that she might never be able to bring her beloved pickle home. Sally Summit grumbled as she looked upon the delicious pickle. She was so hungry that she couldn't resist taking a bite out of it. She savored the sour taste. This was the most delicious thing she had ever eaten. Oh, how Sally loved pickles. Wow, this is so good. Sally said as she took another bite. She thought maybe if I eat some of the pickle, it would be lighter and then I might be able to carry it home. So she ate and ate and ate and now she was full and her stomach hurt. With a full stomach, Sally tried to lift the pickle. However, it seemed even heavier than before. Sally's excitement for the pickle turned into sadness as she realized she might never be able to bring her beloved pickle home. She began to cry so hard, she didn't realize that it had started to rain. Just then, a friendly dung beetle waddling through the woods saw Sally crying. What's wrong, Sally? Why are you crying? Asked Darren the dung beetle. I found the biggest pickle ever, but it's too big for me to carry all the way back to my web said Sally, wiping away her tears. As she looked up at Darren, she noticed he was wet, and that was the first time she noticed the rain. Darren was a kind-hearted beetle and wanted to help Sally. Don't worry, Sally. I can carry it back to your web, he said with a warm smile. Sally was hesitant at first, thinking Darren might want some of her delicious pickle as a reward. Sally sharply said, I don't know, Darren. This is my pickle. I don't want to share it with anyone. If you help me, I will have to give you some of my pickle. Darren frowned. Sally, you don't have to share it with me. I just want to help you because I'm your friend and it's the right thing to do. 
Sally thought for a moment and then realized that Darren was right. She couldn't let her selfishness get in the way of her friendship with Darren. Sally wiped away her tears and replied, That is so kind of you, Darren. Thank you for being a good friend. Darren got ready to lift the huge pickle. It was bigger than anything Darren had lifted before. Darren tried to lift the pickle on his back, but because he was all wet with the rain, it slid right off. As he was trying to lift the pickle again, the clouds grew darker in the sky, and it began to rain heavily. Sally knew that the rain could wash away her pickle. As the rain continued to pour down, Darren tried once more, but he couldn't balance the pickle on his back. I'm strong enough to lift the pickle, but I can't carry it on my back. It keeps sliding off, he said. The rain dripped off their bodies. Sally continued to cry. Now I'll never get my pickle back to my web. It's going to get washed away and be gone forever. Rather than getting upset, Darren decided to sit and think. Why are you sitting? Lift the pickle. It's raining harder, said Sally, getting very upset, being cold and wet and filled with fear of losing her pickle. I think better when I'm sitting, said Darren calmly. A few moments went by and the insects continued to get soaked by the rainstorm. The ground was now getting soft as it was hit by more and more water falling from the sky. I've got it, Darren shouted while jumping up. Can you use your web to make me a pickle backpack? Sally slowly picked up her head and wiped away her tears. Yes, I can do that. That's a great idea, said Sally. She quickly got to work on a very strong backpack to hold the pickle on Darren's back so that he could walk the big pickle back to her web. Sally wove and wove until her little legs were tired. Done, she said with excitement. Darren scooped up the pickle and it fit right inside the backpack. As Darren started walking toward the village, the rain stopped and the sun came out. In no time at all, they were back to Sally's web. Finally, Sally could enjoy her pickle in peace. She was so grateful to Darren. Darren, why did you help me? Asked Sally. It's nice to be nice, replied Darren with a big smile. It is said sally but there must be something i can do for you darren mentioned that he had been looking for a comfy hammock to rest in but none of them in the village were big enough for him sally was happy to help her friend and using her spider skills she created the most comfortable hammock for her friend darren was thrilled with his new hammock and both friends were happy as they both sat on the edge of the village darren in his new hammock and sally next to her giant pickle they realized the rain had made the meadow look more beautiful than before with the mountains covered in mist and the flowers glistening with raindrops. As Sally sat, she realized the thunderstorm had brought them even closer together. Sally began to think that maybe sharing could bring her the most happiness. And then she had a wonderful idea. Maybe she could share with more than just Darren. Thank you so much for your help, Darren. But there is no way I can keep this pickle all to myself. It would be nicer to share it with everyone said Sally. Darren smiled and replied, Great idea, Sally. Darren hopped up out of the hammock and put the pickle back in his webbed backpack. The two friends walked to the center of the village where they saw Arthur, the wise old aunt in charge of the village. Arthur, said Sally, I found this pickle in the woods and I would like to share it with the whole village. Seeing such a large pickle in the town center, other insects started to gather around. Arthur just remained still, just sitting looking at the two friends. I wanted to keep it all to myself, but it's way too big. I would never finish it all, said Sally. Arthur said nothing, but began to slowly uncross his legs and stand up. Sally, for many years I have watched you go into the woods and find amazing, lovely, and sometimes tasty things, but you always hide them in your web, out of sight never offering anything to anyone else. Why now are you willing to share the biggest and most favorite prize with everyone? Said Arthur. The crowd continued to grow as more and more insects from the village gathered to see what was happening. Sally thought for a moment. She thought of all the things she had found and kept to herself. She thought about the kindness that Darren had showed her without expecting anything in return. Sally took a breath and said with confidence, I want to share because a great bug once told me it's nice to be nice. 
Everyone in the village cheered as Arthur smiled. Darren wiggled the pickle out of his web backpack and placed it on the ground. Sally jumped on top of the pickle and said, Everyone dig in! The two friends hugged as the whole village began to feast on the large pickle. You know, Darren, I'm really glad we're friends. I don't think I could have gotten through this pickle problem without you. Darren smiled. Same here, Sally. You're one of the bravest and most adventurous spiders I know. I'm always amazed by the things you can create with your web. Sally blushed. Aw, thanks, Darren. You're pretty amazing, too, because you taught me it's nice to be nice and share with others. They sat basking in the warm sun, enjoying each other's company, while everyone in the village came by to express their gratitude and admiration towards Sally for her selfishness in sharing the giant pickle. From that day forward, Sally's reputation as the most generous and kind-hearted spider in the entire village was solidified as she continued to generously share every treasure she discovered in the woods with the entire community. Because, after all, it's nice to be nice. The End We provided a link in the podcast description to download a free activity booklet that complements this story, The Selfish Spider and Her Pickle. The booklet offers a range of activities to deepen your engagement with the story. You can make text connections and reflect on a time when you were nice to someone or someone was nice to you. To practice math, you can explore the weight of different objects and order them from lightest to heaviest. Additionally, there's a fun STEM engineering design challenge where you can create, test, and improve your own transporter to help someone carry something heavy, just like the beetle helped carry the enormous pickle. We hope you enjoy these activities and have fun exploring the themes and ideas of this story. Hey kids, it's time for some jokes. We hope our story today sparked your imagination and took you on an exciting adventure. But before we go, we have some jokes that are sure to make you laugh. What do you call a pickle sale? A sweet dill. (laughs) How do pickles enjoy a day out? They relish it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Pickle. Pickle who? Pick a little flower and give it to your mother. Uh. That's it for today's story on Storytime Adventures. We hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed telling it. We love it when our listeners share their projects and activities related to the story. So be sure to tag us at Storytime Adventures Podcast on social media. If you have any feedback or suggestions for future stories, please reach out to us at StorytimeAdventuresPodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode. Join us again next time for another exciting adventure. Until then, keep exploring, keep imagining, and keep dreaming big. Thanks for listening.